to August during the stifling later days of summer. I get nervous when I see the weather report. It's a product of growing up near the Gulf of Mexico where tropical storms and hurricanes are a constant threat. The summer I graduated from high school, Hurricane Alicia roared through Texas, the eye of the storm crossing over my parents' house. I was a summertime reporter at my hometown newspaper and was struck by the resilience and resolve of community and school leaders as they tried to get life online and on track. Throughout my career, I found myself drawn to these types of stories. How, in times of extreme stress, do school leaders respond? How do you bring life back to normal for your students and staff when normal no longer exists, or at least won't for some time? As reports of Hurricane Harvey's devastation flooded the airwaves in late August, I pitched this month's cover story to ASBJ editor Kathleen Vale. We had worked together on pieces previously about schools in the wake of Hurricane Katrina and the tornado that struck Joplin, Missouri in 2011. Given Harvey's widespread impact, more than 20% of Texas' more than 1,000 school districts reported damage from the storm, I wanted to take a slightly different approach. Houston ISD, the nation's seventh largest school district, had received the lion's share of media attention due to the massive flooding that struck the area. But because Texas has independent school districts, which cross county and municipal boundaries, the number of students affected in the area was more than twice the number served by Houston ISD. I wanted to know how schools along Harvey's 300-mile path from Rockport, where it made landfall, to the Beaumont-Port Arthur area east of Houston, were dealing with the aftermath of this storm. Starting on September 11th, the day a majority of the affected schools reopened, I followed the trail of a hurricane. Those who deal in crisis and trauma will tell you that restoring normalcy is critical for students' cognitive, social, emotional, and language development. Children who are exposed to repetitive trauma are at risk for a variety of physical and mental health issues that affect their ability to learn. These include anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, and substance abuse. When the trauma comes in the form of a natural disaster, one that leaves families with most of their worldly goods in a heap in the front yard, this effort takes on even more urgency. As I visited numerous communities, touring and photographing damaged schools and seeing students in temporary classrooms, I was struck by the level of resilience on the part of teachers and staff. I was impressed by their determination, even as they were faced with damage to their own homes, as well as the mind-numbing nature of a recovery effort that will take months, if not years. Houston Strong became a catchphrase that has been used and repeated often since Harvey, even as it was pushed farther from our nation's consciousness by the next disastrous event in a never-ending news cycle. Irma in Florida, Maria in Puerto Rico, the mass shootings in Las Vegas and Sutherland Springs. Harvey's long-term effect on student learning and health, the economy of the devastated communities, and the environment will not be known for some time. But the strength and character of the leaders who did everything they could to help school children in the affected areas is something that can never be forgotten.